Hello everyone, this is Chaplain Rhonda Harkins and I am with the Lighthouse Intercessors. I am so thankful to be back with you today. It's been a while since I've done a recording. A couple of months ago, the Lord gave me a very special scripture and I believe it is for the body of Christ. And I want to share it with you and share what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me that I believe will strengthen you bless you, encourage you, and exhort you. So let me begin by saying God bless you today, my friend. And uh, if you would, share this video, subscribe to the Lighthouse Intercessors channel. The other channel under my name is Daily Declarations to Claim, and it is with uh, Rhonda Harkins, okay? All right, so Psalm 73, 26, the Lord woke me up with a couple of months ago, as I said, and that scripture says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Let me say that again. My flesh and my heart they may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And I pray that for you too, my friend. So as I was meditating on that, the Lord showed me how important the heart is in His eyes. How much He loves those whose hearts are turned towards Him because He wants to be the strength of our heart. He wants us to claim Him as our portion forever. He wants us to have goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. He wants us to dwell forever in His house, His heavenly home. And so that is His heart towards his people. And uh, as I've been meditating about the heart, it just so happens I'm going through something, uh, heart palpitations that I've been going through for a, a while now, and but God is strengthening me and blessing me, and he's delivering me from these. And right now, I know you can't see it, but I have a heart monitor on right now. I just got from my cardiologist office yesterday and will have this monitor for seven days. So I'm um, learning a lot about what that means. And as I have been meditating on that, the Lord has been revealing himself to me. So this is some of the scriptures he's given to me, and these are all found in the Psalms. I will have them all listed in the description below this video. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All who hope in the Lord. And then in Jeremiah 17, 5, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Mark 12, 33, We are to love him with all our heart, with all our understanding, with all our soul and with all our strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Luke 10, 27 also says that Jesus himself said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So this monitor that I have on, what is a monitor? Well, it can be someone who gives a warning so that a mistake can be avoided. As a school teacher for years, I was also assigned to be a monitor over standardized tests. I had to make sure and walk around that no one was cheating, that uh, the students understood how to color in the uh, with the number two pencil the answers and make sure if they erased how to do that. There were a lot of big responsibilities as a monitor. It also can be an instrument or device used for observing, checking, or keeping a continuous record of a process or quantity. Here are three examples in sentences. Rosie was chosen to be monitor in class that day. Has the teacher ever had to step away and assigned a responsible student to take names if there was a problem? They are employed as monitors to make sure that the organization works within the law. Now, then, as you know, during an election, they're supposed to have monitors to watch the ballots and to watch what's going on. International monitors are keeping watch on the election process. We know it because that's been in the news. We know how important monitors are. Can you imagine, just as I have on this heart monitor for physical purposes, what if we could all have on a monitor 24 7 that was spiritual and that would keep us from going to the right or to the left, but keep us on the path of righteousness for His name's sake? that would alert us when our heart was going into a problem. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, we have such a monitor, and His wonderful name is Holy Spirit. So, let me just share. I believe we have two examples. Esther from the Old Testament and Mary from the New Testament. I would submit to you the Holy Spirit showed me they both broke their alabaster jar. Now, I realize that we only have a, an account of that, of Mary breaking that alabaster jar and pouring it on the feet of Jesus and wiping it with the tears and with her hair, the sacrifice that that was. And I know Esther did not have a physical alabaster jar, but... Spiritually, she broke that jar. Let me explain. This was an ultimate sacrifice for both women to follow wholeheartedly the and to obey what the Holy Spirit was showing them to do. They thought nothing of their own lives, but put others ahead of themselves. Mary put Jesus ahead. And she had been listening, see, to Jesus at his feet for a while. And so she had the revelation that he was going to die, that he was going to the cross. She heard what he said. And so she, as Jesus said, had broken that alabaster jar and given that precious oil, that dowry money as a bride. That's what it was. See, she was symbolic of all of us to be the bride of Christ. And she did that as an offering to him of love, of ultimate price of love. Now Esther, let's think about her. Esther was queen, but she remembered the reason she was queen was because another queen named Vashti had humiliated and had disobeyed the king. And that's why she was now cast down. She was willing, Esther was willing to let go of her position as queen to obey her uncle Mordecai, who was her authority figure, and to follow what he said because of her people. Both showed tremendous courage. 
like Jesus also, they were willing to lay down their lives for others, just as Jesus laid down his life for us. It also says in Matthew fifteen eighteen, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. That's what defiles a person. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Psalms 81.10 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Psalms 51.10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do you know what a right spirit is? It's a generous, a magnanimous spirit that lets go of offenses, that lets go of unforgiveness, lets go of grudges, and lets God be your vindicator. Holy Spirit, I ask you to monitor us. Be our monitor, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. Watch over our hearts, cleanse us, purify us, fill our hearts with your love, righteousness, and wisdom. May our mouths be set to speak your oracles, your word, your heart, your revelation, your guidance, your counsel. Let us speak for those who are oppressed and have no voice. Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. May I be like you. You know the man who wrote that song, Eddie Espinosa? He said that he had been a Christian since 1969, but he knew that there were things in his life that he needed to get rid of, and he had become very complacent. And he prayed to the Lord, The only way that I can follow you is for you to change my appetite. The things that draw me away, you must change my heart. He offered his heart to the Lord to change it. And that's how that song was written in 1982. There's another song I've listed in the description called The Refiner's Fire. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Oh, my heart's one desires to be holy. Set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy. Set apart for you, my master. Ready to do your will. Cleanse me from within. Make me holy from my sin deep within. My heart's one desire is to be holy. I choose to be holy ready to do your will. Oh, Lord, ready to worship, ready to follow, ready to do your will. That song is by Brian Dorkson, and I've also listed it. I praise you and thank you, Lord, that you're monitoring our hearts, that you're keeping watch over us by your Spirit. And we love you, Lord. You're not a hard task, Master. You give us grace, grace upon grace. I speak grace over you today. I speak grace over your heart. And I thank you that you are our strength, the strength of our heart and our portion forever. And you fill our mouths with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. I declare healing and deliverance over all of us today. And I pray that you find that God himself is your portion forever. Amen. God bless you.